so nice. It's supposed to be away like I am today at the beach on vacation and you're still wanting to practice your sight reading. Well, is there a way to practice sight reading without a piano? Well, in this video I'm going to show you how. <sighs> it's so cold, let me put a jumper. So I wasn't actually on vacation, uh, in case you thought I was. I'm here stuck at home, you know, in lockdown in Sydney in winter. Uh, for a split second I was almost believing that I was there on the beach, but that is not so. But for you guys out there who may have the chance to travel again, well this video is for you. Hi guys, this is Manu from Piano Sight Reading, where I give sight reading tips to pianists. And in this video, I'm going to give you eight ways to practice sight reading away from the piano. If you can, try to find a recording of the piece you have with you. Uh, you can go, you know, on YouTube or Spotify or somewhere. And the exercise is just to have the score in front of you and while you listen to the piece of music you follow the score and what this will help you do is to actually make connections between what you see in the score and what you hear um, and it's even better if you can find more than one recording because then you can actually see how different people approach a piece and this can give you ideas on how to interpret music in general. Now again with the score, what you can do is test your general knowledge to see how much you understand in the score. So you could ask yourself a series of questions. For example, what key is this piece in? What is the time signature of this piece? Are there any repeated patterns or repeated sections? What about chord progressions? Are, are there any chord progressions or modulations? Are there any modulations in the piece? Something else you can do with the score is to try to imagine how it would sound just from reading the score. Um, if you've never done this type of thing before, just try doing the melody. So try to imagine how the melody would sound. And if you can't quite hear the pitch, just try to hear the rhythm. So just try to test how much you can hear just from reading the score. Something else you might try to do is to do air piano. So your you know, find a flat surface somewhere, like a table, have the score in front of you, and then try to play through it, but, you know, you're not actually playing, you're just, uh, you know, you're moving your fingers. And this can help you test how good you are at, you know, figuring out fingering. And something else you can do which helps with hand coordination is just to tap the rhythm. So tap the rhythm of the left hand with your left hand and the rhythm of the right hand with your right hand. And you can, you know, tap on a table or on your knees, doesn't matter. And you could even try with a friend of yours, say you're traveling with a musician buddy, you could get your friend to tap just one of the hands and you tap the other hand and you can turn that into some game. It can be actually quite fun. And you could try different speeds as well, see if you can still make it work. Another thing you can do with the score is to try to read through one of the hands and try to say the 
names of the notes. Or if you're familiar with solfege, you could try and say the syllables, you know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Um, you could also try to identify the intervals, whether, you know, you're doing the melodic intervals or the harmonic intervals. So the ones that are played together or the ones that follow each other, you could try and test how well you can recognize them. And you can also test your chord recognition, like how well can you recognize chords. You can try to just identify whether it's a root position chord or a first in or a first inversion chord or a second inversion chord. Or you can just try to see if you can work out what chord it is, whether it's a C major chord or a G minor chord, that kind of thing. Now, if you don't have to conduct, what you could try and do is to conduct yourself and to sing or verbalize the, the melody. So you could, so say it's in three, four, so if three, four is one, two, three, and then you try to say the rhythm to your conducting. So you could go da, 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 something like that. Or if you can, you, you try and sing, sing the melody again with the conducting. And this can be helpful to develop your inner hearing. Like, um, if you are able to, you know, sing the melody, then it's easier to sight read, usually. And lastly, what you could try and do is to practice memorizing bars of music. So you could just take one bar, say the first bar of the piece you have in front of you, um, give yourself five to 10 seconds and then hide it and then try to recall as much as you can. So try to recall the notes and the rhythm. And what this helps you do is to develop your working memory because when you're sight reading, what you're actually doing is you look at a bar and you quickly memorize the bar so that you can look at the next bar. So if you're able to memorize one bar of music, then this will help you when you go back to sight reading at the piano, uh, you will have worked on, you know, memorizing music. So those were eight ideas on how to practice sight reading away from the piano. Now, of course, it goes without saying that if you want to get better at sight reading, you want to practice at the piano. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're where you don't have a piano for an extended period of time, you know, for months at a time, then try some of the ways I gave you today. Uh, because it's it's better than nothing. It's not ideal, but it will at least it will help you maintain some of that mental workout that sight reading gives you. So let me know in the comments which way you liked the best, which practice methods did you like the sound of. Uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Happy sight reading!